All right. So the first thing for this proving ground assignment is I want to immediately save it as something else. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, because I don't want to overwrite my assignment one. So this is going to be proving ground number one. And I call this a creature scape, if you want to give it a name, description. And I always recommend you save with your name and some sort of description. Now remember that the proving ground is different than our assignments and exercises in that there's not just artwork as part of this. There's also the writing in the post, the identifying its size, its pixel resolution, and whether that's best for print or screen, and then writing about how you see the creature working in its environment. But let's, let's deal with making the anatomy match, the angle of the anatomy match the environment, and let's work on making the lighting match. So I got kind of lucky here. This doesn't always happen to me, but my creature was kind of designed in full spectrum with clean lighting. And my fantasy landscape is pretty much, even though it's at, at sunrise here, there's so much reflected light. You can see the lighting hitting the mountains from this angle. You can see it hitting the rocks and the tree from this angle. And my creature is kind of lit from that angle, especially on its back. So it already has a form shadow on its belly. It's got a little, maybe too much light on its one leg for this environment because there's no ground light really. But um, its lighting and its color is, is matching okay. But we want to be able to alter that. So this is what I do. The first thing I want to do is make a duplicate of that PNG creature. So I do that with Command J. And then I turn off the smart object layer behind it. The reason I want to keep that smart object layer in there is so I have something that's at full resolution if I ever decide I want to make it as big as it is. The duplicate I'm going to rasterize. So I right click on it and I rasterize it. That makes it so I can do things like play with its color, play with its pose, change its pixels. So the first thing I might try is to sync my creature down through my layers. And I'm going to do that with command left bracket. And with each one, you're going to notice it goes from being on the top of my landscape. You see how its toes are in front of my foreground. I'm going to start syncing it down. So first its toes are underneath the rock or behind the rock. Now both its feet are behind the grasses. Now it's partially behind the tree. Now it's fully behind the tree. Now it's in the water. Now it's behind the hills. Now it's in the foothills. And eventually it will be behind the mountains until eventually it's there, right? Now some creatures will work very, very well as like kaiju-sized creatures. And that's obviously going to change their color scheme because they're part of the atmosphere. They're going to recede an atmospheric perspective more towards middle gray. My creature is more meant to be a middle ground or foreground character. So I'm going to push him up to right behind the grasses. That seems to be where it fits. But if my character is at that, at that level, this is not the size I was thinking. Because this is about three times bigger than a full grown lion right now in the reality of my world, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to hit Command T, and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. See what makes sense. So it's about the size of like a wild pig or a large, a large dog. And then I might play with the positioning of it. I like the idea of it being... in the grass, but I also want it nicely framed by the environment. Now I can do the really easy thing, which is just to hide its feet completely behind grass. But in order for demonstration purposes, I want you to see how you can change the position 
of the feet and the angle of the anatomy. So now I'm just trying to find a place for its head where it's not too annoying with the with that grass. And of course, we can always change the grass too. All right, so I'm going to put it right there. I think that works. So that's about the size I want. Yep, I think that was right. Next, I want to play with its angle of anatomy. So is the angle of this anatomy, does it make sense with the terrain? So let's look at its feet. Its feet, it's right at kind of the, the ground there. There's a nice shadow around it. It's at the base of the tree. This is a great opportunity to improve your, your landscape areas, right? There's a little bit of foreground element that's in front of it. So I can go in and I can use my eraser and clean up because this isn't your landscape anymore. This is your creature scape. So you can use your creature to hide parts of your landscape you're not that fond of. And you can use this as an opportunity to, to fix a lot of things. So how can we change the angle of our creature just slightly to fit our landscape? So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and label my creature with a color. I'm going to make it orange. So it's easy to find the layer. This is my rasterized creature layer. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll make that one red. Then I'm going to turn off the one I duplicated from. And this is because I'm going to puppet warp it. So I'm going to do like we do with Command-T and warp, but I'm going to pose the creature based on its anatomy. So I go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And what it does is it will take my PNG layer, which is already cut out, and it will map it with this chicken wire like it's a 3D model of triangular polygons. What I want to do is I want to pin, pretend this is a, a taxidermed animal, right? And I'm going to take little pins and secure them. I'm actually going to turn off here. Before I do this, I want to just show you it really clearly. So I'm going to turn off the grass in front of it. And we're going to make its feet match this landscape. So I go to Edit, Puppet Warp. You do this on a duplicate. Because the problem with warping is it's going to soften some pixels, right? So if you change your mind, you want to be able to go to the original. But I'm going to pin its feet. And that means that that's a point where I can warp from. And then I'm going to pin its knee joints. So that it can bend from there. And then I'm going to pin its upper jaw because I'm going to change the expression of mine a little bit. It's lower jaw. It's the back of its neck where the spine can bend. And maybe it's, uh, maybe it's pelvis, it's tail, it's back end area. You want to pick quite a few areas because from each of those points that you pin, you can pivot it. Oh, thank you. Okay, now that I've set my anchors, my pins, it allows me to individually move from those kind of hinge points. So you can see I can't close the mouth completely this way. It will look really weird if I do it too much, but I can do little shifts to change the expression. And just like warp, I can stretch and I can push back. So you want to kind of understand the anatomy of your creature. And if I want an additional pin, I can always just place one and then stretch from there. So wherever the muscles might tug, I can play with it. So how do I get the feet to match the terrain? So if I wanted to move this foot down a little bit, I can do that. And you see how it will only warp and change from the next anchor point, which is the knee. And I can kind of push the pelvis down a little bit. 
then I can move this foot over a little bit. And then the knee. And then mostly it's where the weight needs to fall. So I need the creature's weight to be a little bit further back. And then this foot, which is kind of coming forward, I can bring it up and make that a little bit more obvious. Now this is why we paid so much attention to the silhouette of the creature when we designed it, so that we have clean silhouettes to puppet. If this was just like a big standing bear from the front with everything internal, I wouldn't be able to move its arms, right? Because it wouldn't be something I could put individual grommets into. I can even adjust the ears using Puppet Warp. And we just want to find a position that really works with the angle of the anatomy of our creature. And also works for our landscape. But if you warp it too much, it's going to look kind of weird. So you can always do Command Z to take steps back. So once you're happy with it, you hit return. Okay. And I do it with a duplicate so that I can turn on the duplicate underneath and see what I moved it from. So I started with this, and now it's this. Now I can always puppet warp it more if I wanted to make some changes. So I go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And I don't like kind of how the ear ended up. So I'm going to mess with that. You can always go back to your smart object if you need to. But each time you use Puppet Warp, you have to pin everything you want to pin. So it's a little annoying that way. Otherwise, the whole thing will rotate at your fulcrums. I'm just find, trying to find a good placement. Yeah, so that now fits the anatomy pretty well. The angle of the anatomy works. And I think that looks better than this in the environment. Okay, next we have to worry about the lighting. And first we're going to deal with the lighting on the creature itself. And we can always use things like dodge and burn to, to augment the lighting. And I might do that, but the, first let's do the easy things. Let's do the direct adjustments. So I'm going to hit Command S to save my progress so far. And once I've posed it, now I want to do image adjustments and I want to start with levels. And I want to think about how to make this creature match the landscape as it is right now. And I'm going to just do the mid-tone levels and ask myself, do I want it to be in the mid-tones brighter, kind of like the tree behind it? Or do I want it to be darker, kind of like the foreground tree in front of it? Or do I want it to be exactly where it was or just slightly one or the other? And I like to squint when I do this. Remember, this isn't so much about making your creature blend in as to complement your creature. So you want it to be visible, but you also want it to feel like it matches. So I'm actually going to brighten mine a little bit, and squinting helps me see that that makes sense. So I'm just brightening it a tiny bit. I can always hit Command Z and see the difference. Right, and then use my history. Next, I'm going to do image adjustment. 